A lot of us feel a little overwhelmed this time of the year because it's so dark outside. We want to sleep more, we want to eat more perhaps, put on a little more weight. It's because we have what about six or seven hours less of sunlight each day than we did back a few months ago around the first of July. You know the earth has turned and so the sun you know is further, well we're actually closer but it, the slant is so much different that we don't we don't have the sunlight and so all these little melatonins are are secreted in our brains that make us want to sleep longer some people use special lamps to fight this this disease called seasonal affective disorders these lamps are often available in many factories i understand and workplaces in the scandinavian countries where it gets so dark even for longer period of times for employees to sit in front of them and so they can awaken and become a little more productive. In some countries they used to just sleep more and I'm sure that happens today. In old historic France or in the, in the 18th century whole communities around the area of Flanders would just go to bed this time of the year. Maybe they had a big meal and everybody said I'll, I'll see you in March and they would sleep even with their animals until the winter passed. John Adams, before he became president, noticed and wrote about this when he journeyed to Paris as an envoy back in the 18 or in the 1790s. He couldn't even get a place to eat, no place to sleep because everybody was all packed in for the winter and he thought it was, as a Puritan, pretty disgusting. Well, Advent, Christmas, is really a, a season in the Christian tradition centered around these darkest of all days culminating with the winter solstice when we teach people that darkness is only in our mind it's only a part that affects our body but there's a spirit within us which is connected with the Creator which is beyond all time and material limitations it's eternal and that's the story of Jesus coming as the as an avatar as a sent one from God to teach humanity in darkness, in despair, you know, in depression, that there was hope. And it was a story not just of, you know, our Jewish and early Christian tradition, but it was around all those countries in the area at the time, going all the way back perhaps 10,000 years ago to Horus of ancient uh, Egypt. Similar stories, the darkest of the days of the year, a special agent from on high ascent, being born in holy, humble, mundane, set, mundane settings to teach all of humanity, rich and poor, kings and peasants, that we are love, that we are a part of this divine light recognized by the stars and the wise men that come from the east. And so this season is really a season in Darkness, despair, snow, I mean all of that. That go. We have a perfect area up here in the north for Advent Christmas to realize that that's not we, what we identify with, but we identify with ourselves as eternal spirit. Have you ever been lost? I was lost once in the woods as a kid. In my father's farm back in the woods we had a sugar shack and it was around early March and the days were a little longer and light. And during the end of the day, my father asked me to return back home and to help with some of the evening chores. Well, I got lost in the road out of the woods. And I realized as darkness settled that I was just going around circles. And I was terrified and I began to have all types of imaginations of what might happen to me. But I kept walking and walking and walking. And after about two hours, I saw a light in the distance and it was, it was a neighbor's house with a light on it. And I walked toward the light, found the road, and finally got home to great relief. To just live in darkness and despair of winter without the inward understanding of who we are is like being lost. And so when the injunction comes from sacred writings to, to awaken, to wake up, it means to wake up to who we really are. Now is the time. Now, you can be a believer in all this, but really not having experienced it. When we read in the scriptures 
that the salvation is closer now than when we even believe from Romans, as Paul wrote. It means that we could have believed it years ago, many years ago, but never experienced it. But now the message makes it more clear. You're not your body. You're not the mess of being lost in the woods of despair, of death and disease and wars and all that's going on around us in this world. But we're, we're, we're part of that which is of it, but not, we're in it, but not of it. We are spirit. And there's a vast difference. I didn't understand this until I was in my 40s. I was an ordained minister trying to teach the Bible to people. I was being paid to be a spiritual leader. And it was through a Jesuit priest from India when I was around 42 or 3 that he finally explained to me that I was not this body. I was not even of this world. It was just a temporary dream, a nightmare that I was having. And I had, and I could awaken to who I really was, spirit, joy, peace, and love. And it changed my whole life, my whole teaching ministry. A few days ago, a young woman, late 30s, she wrote me an email. She was a confirmant in my, one of my classes some 25 years ago. And she said, Pastor Dave, a most wonderful thing happened to me. I went on a four-day retreat with some people in our, in our congregation. And we, we sat in silence and we prayed and we listened and we, we tried to do acts of kindness and charity for others and suddenly said, said it hit me. I felt for the first time in my whole life that I was surrounded and covered with the arms of Jesus. See, there's a difference between believing all this stuff and experiencing it, taking the time to let it resonate and to be awakened in our lives. And at best, the songs, the words, the candles, the lights, the stories of the season should be to remind us that we're not a part of the darkness of the world. We're in it, but it's, we're not of it. And there's a vast difference. And we can experience tremendous release from being aware of that. My teacher, Father DeMello, said, wrote this in one of his books, Spirituality then means waking up. Most people, even though they don't know it, are asleep. They're born asleep. They live asleep. They marry in their sleep. They breed children in their sleep. They die in their sleep without ever waking up. They never understand the loveliness and the beauty of this thing that we call human existence. All mystics, whether they're Catholic, Christian, non-Christian, or whatever their name, are unanimous on this one thing, that all is well. All is well. That everything else is a mess, but it is all well. Strange paradox, to be sure, he writes, but tragically, most people never get to see it as well as because they are just asleep. They're having nightmares. So awaken. Spend some time alone, in silence, breathing it in and feeling it, understanding that your identity is not the body, but its spirit. It's not words, it's not judgments, it's not thinking, but it's beyond all that into a realm of eternal, eternal dimension of peace. Now the test of it is the experience of that peace. At first it may be short-lived. You might just get a little glimpse of it. But as you daily reflect on it and meditate on it and pray over it, and pray really means to watch and observe myself and not always judging others, you will get longer periods of it. That's how you know an awakened person. They're happier for longer periods of time. Truly happy, truly joyful, truly peaceful. Now, I'm certainly not there yet. I have some days where I'm, I give myself an A. I'm pretty close, up maybe the 80, 90 percent. Some days I give myself a failing grade. I'm 60, 50, or even below in percentage of my day of peace and happiness. And so I have to come back and Forgive myself for being lost, for uh, grasping for nightmares. I have to let them go. And then I return again to peace.